What's up, everybody? We back out here on Blackwater, man. First time back since the uh, exploration or the recon. Now we're going to see if we can't do this thing for real. See if we can't hook up on some snake heads and maybe some bass. We'll start out looking for the snakes. And we'll try to finish up with some bass. But either way, welcome back, Reverend Big John's Backyard Fishing. Always giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of these things are possible. So, hey man, let's get it. Well, we are finally out here. We are on the water. We gonna see if we can catch us finally some nice fat snakeheads. Oh, we gonna start off with the Johnson spoon. Seeing if this can attract somebody. We gonna start off with this current right here. Woo, low. Something just splashed right in front of me. I have no idea what that is. Keep in mind, I'm still a rookie out here <laughs> when it comes to chasing these snakeheads. So I don't know what the recipe for disaster is. I was supposed to get some uh, info from a guy. All right, I got fish jumping around me. So, I got to figure out what's the uh, 411. I just got to figure out what they hitting on. We in eight feet of water here. The question is finding what they want artificially, what will attract them. We definitely don't want to come this far with a skunk, so. Um, hopefully that's not the case today. Anyway, it's a beautiful fall morning. Good to be out here. It's, uh, say the water is 63 degrees. Hmm. That's a little warmer than I expected. And it's about 57 degrees. It's nine o'clock. There's all kind of fish down here, man. So I just got to find the right recipe. Since I don't have any live bull minnows. So as you know, that makes it once again, exciting for us fishermen trying to get a, um, a fish to attack an artificial. That's the name of the game. I don't know if I should switch or throw on, uh, you know, now y'all know I got my eight pound test with me. I don't know how eight pound test would be doing with a monster. Uh, I have caught my biggest fish. Like I was telling uh, Rick from r and my biggest fish was on a six pound test, man. Five pounds, 21 inches. Over at uh, Centennial Lake when they had lily pads. Ain't never really been the same since them pads are gone. But definitely not afraid to use it. I use a lot of light line. I've caught more fish on my light line than I ever have on all my heavy lines. I've caught plenty of fish, but I'm just saying the biggest ones have all been on light line. They jumping all around me, man. And I haven't slung one in yet. And this is a big fish, whatever it is, because that wake 
around it is humongous. And I wish I had some minnows. <laughs> At least to land a couple of them, make sure I got something to take home with me. But uh, this is a challenge, right? And I always tell you, life throws you challenges, so you gotta figure out how to make it work for you, right? You gotta try and success in the madness. Sometimes you don't have all the tools and the proper stuff, but you gotta find something like, you know, I'm old MacGyver days, you gotta find something. I'm old 18 days, you gotta make something out of nothing uh, in order to make something happen, so. That's what it's up, I mean, that's what's up, that's what we're here for. We're trying to make something happen out here. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing the prize and unable to get the prize. That's when you gotta really dig in. How's it going? Are you going some crabbing? Yeah. The reason why you give it that little pause is because simply sometimes there's a fish that's actually following it and watching. He examines a little bit closely and then once it starts moving again, pow! Now that's an ideal situation. Because you never know if something's following it or not. And so just in case he won't commit to the speed, you give it that quick little pause or pop. And if he wants it, he'll go get it. If he don't, you'll be casting again. <laughs> Ooh. Gotta love this sport, man. It is not for the faint at heart. I promise you. So, I have still not figured out anything yet. It's still early yet. I guess we've been in out here. Now. What we got? We're going on an hour. With no hits. Oh, uh, man. We're about an hour and a half in. Still no bites. I didn't see nobody else catch nothing even right now, but I definitely understand the reason for um, live bait. When it's tough like this, and you come down here to Cambridge, you want to make sure you don't skunk. So, we're not going to skunk. We just got to figure out the formula. What's the formula? When in doubt, crank it out. They always jumping behind me, around me, beside me. I need to jump on the line. Look at that bald eagle. Nice. You don't see that stuff in the city. Only out here with the elements. Got a fishy. It's a nice fat perch. We have not skunked. We ain't look for we ain't got what we want. We ain't skunked. This is a fat perch. Stop. Gotta be thankful though. Thank you, sir. I know y'all looking at this and like licking y'all chops because it's beautiful, isn't it? But I have not found the target species. And all this good looking stuff. Well, I'm at my three hour mark. And uh, all I got is a perch to show. You know, first time on a body of water. Trying to figure this thing out, trying to figure snakeheads out. I know bass, but they should be around, but they ain't hitting nothing. <clears throat> but, um, man, 
tell you, man, Maryland, you have been tough on me this year. Come on, y'all. Let's make our way. <laughs> See if we can't find something. In the meantime, gotta get my exercise on. I'm still trying to lose that 50 pounds, y'all. It's been a struggle, but I have not lost sight. I just keep on chugging, just like we're fishing. We get some setbacks along the way, but you know. It's a slow process. I get that. I ain't trying to lose 50 pounds in a month. It will almost be a year come January since I started. I have been down as low as I believe 30. I'm probably sitting at 25 right now. So I can't complain. But I need to hit 50 before I go to 75. So, I'm taking baby steps for real. Watch what I eat. Make sure I exercise. But then, I still eat what I want to eat too. You can't do no diet, y'all. Only thing that's gonna help me is what I would do on a regular basis. So, you cut back some of those things. Knock out some of your carbs. Knock out some of your desserts. And, you know, treat yourself from time to time. That's the secret, man. That's Formula. So, taking care of myself, eating right, doing what I'm supposed to do. Is there, is this really just two feet out here? I think the lesson that's learned on this one, though. I know I love to use my artificials, but when I come this far, I'm going to have some of those minnows with me that they seem to like. I call them snakehead destroyers up here, whatever the case may be. I'm going to get me some destroyers, so just in case, I can't get my artificials to click. I won't go home empty hand. Unlike bass. I will always use my artificials. That's the sport. That's the skill. But for snakeheads, I'm just trying to eat them, bro. <laughs> man, you hear so much about this place, man, and all the snakeheads they catch down here. When you come down, you just be like, oh, yo, they got to be that easy to catch. Well, they ain't that easy to catch. I can tell you that much. I learned that over the locks on the Potomac. You got any yet? Two nice snakeheads, that's it. I ain't, that's what I've been trying, but I ain't been able to get none of them. You got minnows or something? Yeah, big bull minnows. Yeah. I've been trying artificial, but I ain't get them to bite. Yeah, I lost my kayak here a couple times last week, and I didn't get any on like, you know, chatter baits, spinner baits, and then uh, the last two trips, I've done the big bull minnows and gotten like eight a day. Right now, I only have two. Look at, he didn't hooked up. Yeah, the minnow's a ticket. Yeah, yeah so y'all see it right there. You got a nice little snake head. So that's what's been hitting around here. There are definitely snakeheads here. All this movement is, is snakehead, and that's what that guy pretty much just showed me. You know, they hitting them minnows, and uh, that's it. We gonna do that again, man. We gonna come and hit the show again with some minnows, because you really can just stay right here. All right, y'all, in my quest for a snakehead, I landed a bass, and uh, of course the camera was not rolling. 
as I was packing up and getting ready to roll. I got a nice one down here. So while you miss the fight, you won't miss the fish. <clears throat> There we go. Nice one. Nice fishy. Two pounds, five ounces. Two pounds, five ounces. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, so leave it to me, of course, to uh, miss the fight. <laughs> Once again, I thought it was on because I was packing up, getting ready to head on out. But uh, I was wrong yet again. But we on. And I, I dragged that one on the bottom and was hopping it. And that's when he picked up. got him he is not happy either he done beat up his head <laughs> Woo. That's a, that's a big one, man he got a big bump on his head well how's that for a couple of minutes one nice bass and one nice snake head I'm bleeding him out right now so these things are strong. You hear what I'm saying? They are strong. And this is the biggest one. This is a PB. So I haven't even had a chance to weigh them yet. All right, we're back in business. Man, that was exciting. That was cool. <laughs> and I accomplished with artificial. You know I'm excited about that. That's what's up right there. See, I tell you, man, persevere. Just hang in there. As y'all know, I be ready to sign off all the time. <laughs> but when I sign off, I'm still here, man. I'm still here looking for that bite. Still here trying to land. Yeah, let me try this other side real quick, and then I'm going to do my infamous three casts, and I'm out. 50 casts later, you still be here. <laughs> all right, man, good luck. I thought I could stay above it, but I can't, so I'm out. What's up, y'all? Post game report. We are on our way back. We had a good day on Blackwater. Any day out on the water is a good day. But there were some lessons that were learned. This was my first time out in the kayak. 
first time I came and this, I did my, you know, I did my recon. The next time I came out, I'm in my yak. And so what I did was I started off by the bridge simply because that's where the fish were busting it. You know, in between, it wasn't like it was um, constantly, but they would just, you know, hit from time to time. So I probably spent my first hour right there trying to get a fish to hit and trying to see which ones it was, you know, because I really didn't know. It could have been a snake here, it could have been bass, but I was throwing stuff that bass would have picked up on and they didn't. So, you know, immediately I just figured they were snakeheads. But anyway, I stayed there for about an hour. And um, when they still didn't hit for me, I decided to go ahead and explore and, and hit the shallows. Um, and so, you know, I stayed around two to three feet going around and um, just fishing the, uh, the shore, right? From the grass out to the boat, out to the yak, whatever the case may be. And um, man, I, I got no hits, man. I got no hits. I, I, I still seen fish jumping from here and there, you know, but still I, I couldn't get a bite. You know, three, three hours in, I finally hit a perch. And um, I figured that was probably just gonna be it, you know. So made my way back up to the front, got back around the bridge and I still seen them jumping, um, but still couldn't get them to hit, man. So then I, and I, I threw everything, y'all. I threw you, you spinners, um, uh, top water. Um, I didn't throw a buzz, but you know, I pretty much threw a buzz. Um, prank baits, you know, I even threw the, uh, the wacky out there, man, and to nothing. No, you know, nothing hit, man. So then, you know, I switched to um, the swim bait. Why? You know, because the guy was out there with minnows and I see him catch two off the minnows. And I said, well, everybody was talking about, you know, you got to bring these minnows down here and they, you know, they had crushed them. So um, I went and tied a swim bait on and um, five minutes later, I hit this bass. I, you know, I thought it was snakehead at first, but then I seen him, I was like, oh, that's a nice little bass. You know, and so I got a little two pound bass which was nice and uh, then five minutes later we got the snake here three pounds so that's a pb um so i didn't skunk you know that's always a plus when you come you know hour 45 minutes away you want to be able to catch something so i was able to get one and one well actually i guess one and one and one <laughs> you know but the perch that really don't count but anyway um i did manage catching so but the lesson learned was if i'm coming there for snakeheads all I really need to do is stay around the bridge. If I'm going just to fish the area, which I will be, because it's a, it's a beautiful area, you know, and I'm sure there's much more to catch and much more to see out there. But when I'm coming for snakeheads in general, I can stay right by the bridge. Get my yak, post up, you know, I'm gonna bring me, um, I'm gonna bring a dozen minnows with me, you know, but I'm gonna still do my artificial. Once, once them dozen run out, you know, they just run out, but I'll be able to get the um, my eaters, you know, and then I can continue to move on and continue to fish, do whatever the case may be, versus coming down and just, you know, trying all artificial to get these fish, because, you know, while I'm a purist at best, you know, I just want to eat the snakeheads. So, I, you know, give me a minnow, if that's what's going to get them. If I'm coming down here for an hour, 45 minutes, and now I got to go back and travel because I stayed longer than what I was supposed to. So, but anyway, had a good time, y'all. We got some fish. We on our way back. Got to deal with a little bit of traffic. Um, hopefully, it ain't too bad. It don't look like it's too bad as far as Google right now, but you never know what happens once you get close to the bridge and people start getting out of work, you know. But with all that said, lesson was definitely learned. You got to go out. Every time you go out, you got to learn something, you know. And so I've learned something, and now, hey, I'll be back. In the meantime, though, y'all know what it is. This is Reverend Big John. Always remember to keep the Lord first and keep your lines tight. God bless. I'll see you next time, Lord.